initially you're going to notice, especially for people that are loyal to both companies, a change in the award program. They're going to have to merge those award programs together. And when they do, somebody's going to get left out and it's going to be a lot of gnashing of teeth over that. Secondarily, United has things like premium economy and a bunch of really interesting programs for fees that they put together that Continental has resisted to some degree. So they're going to have to merge those programs together. And really, I guess what you'll see is also, you know, if you're in Newark or um, Houston or Cleveland or in Denver, uh, San Francisco, Washington, D.C. area, those hubs will probably get some more flights and then we'll see less flights around in certain other areas. Basically, the big network legacy airlines have centralized about around a series of hubs across the United States. And really, the low-cost airlines only are in about 60 cities. So what's going to happen is the other 150 cities that have airports are going to get significantly higher prices in the long run. In the short run, you know, the competition will keep things a little bit lower as the low-cost airlines keep the big boys in check. But the bottom line is ticket prices are going to go up. We're, we've seen them go up over the last three or four months, and I think we're going to continue to see that over the next year or two. With uh, Delta and United combined, now both owning Continental and Northwest, the two of them combined have a huge market share for international reach, including Europe, Asia, South America, Latin America. And, you know, what this is going to do is just put more pressure on those international prices. We've seen international prices come up over last year's historic lows anywhere from 30 to 50 percent. I, will, I bet you we'll continue to see those prices really high for transatlantic. If you can get across the ocean for under $1,000 um, at the end of this summer, you're making a pretty good deal.